What is going on, gaming nerds? Welcome back to Midnight Gaming with Mr. Gamer. Thanks for coming to the channel and hanging out. Hopefully, you guys are having an amazing day. I'm having a pretty decent day. It's midnight yet again. Yet again, we are back on Rushing Fishing 4. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about when to repair your reels. And most importantly, how to figure out when to repair your reels. Let's get started. Okay, so to start off with, I've got ourselves a, 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 a reel that you might know is called a Beluga Narc. Now, I'm going to talk about all of the different parts that you can repair or replace on this. Most importantly, I'm going to talk about mech weight. And basically, when it comes down to mech weight, I think a lot of people, they, they really have the wrong impression of what mech weight really is. Most people think that all mech weight does is, oh, it allows you to lock your reel. When they're actually very wrong um unfortunately uh i think there's a lot of stereotypes when it comes down to mech weight and that is one of the biggest ones it's all about blocking your reel when it actually isn't that's only about one third of what it's actually all about so i'm going to save that for last we'll talk about what mech weight is and stuff like that and how to know when to repair your reel to start off with, when we go into the workshop and I pull up the Beluga Narga, you've got multiple different things that you can repair here. Now, there is a guide on the forums that's Lev that's Levy's guide, L-E-V-Y. Just, just type in Google Russian Fishing for um, repair reel or something like that, and you'll almost always go to Levy's guide. He has some basic suggestions when it comes down to repairing your reels. I don't agree with them. Um, for the most part. Some I do, some I don't. When it comes down to your ball bearings, in my opinion, he says 50%. Um, I could kind of agree with that. Basically what it comes down to is some of these, these mechanisms make it so you have a fail chance on your reel or your reel to break. That is mostly your mechanisms, okay? And your friction break. These are kind of the two most important things. There's also... Um, two different ways of repairing your reel there is replacing and then there is repairing your grease your spool your friction brake and your ball bearings are all going to cost the exact same amount of money no matter what percentage they have on their wear so the wear on this is always going to be 251 the wear or the, the the grease on this to replace is 40 always going to be 44 the spool is always going to be 700 and as you can tell the 700 is a lot of silver it's one of the most expensive things your mechanism however is a repairable item so these four are replaceable this one is repairable when you replace it's always the same amount of money but it's usually more money because you're replacing it completely and as you can see the spool is ridiculously expensive okay so basically what it comes down to is with the ball bearings you really don't have a fail rate on this there's not really anything that says oh well at 50 percent you're gonna completely fail and the, the reel is gonna break so with this one a lot of people suggest 50% wear before you even repair it. I have a hard time going that far with the wear on this. I'll repair it around 30%, okay? When it comes to the spool, that one I will go 50% because that one has such a high cost that I want to get as much use of that, out of that as possible. And I'll wait until that actually gets down to around 30 30, 40, 50% before I repair it, depending on how much money I've got or what I'm saving for at the time. The grease, however, is something that I don't agree with. A lot of people think that the grease doesn't need to be repaired until under 15%. However, if you guys have noticed, when you are fishing, at the very bottom of the screen, you see that little fire icon down there? That icon is your heat icon. Your heat icon, when a fish grabs your bait and lure and takes off like a bat out of hell, when it starts to really get going, that icon will light up and it will go orange or it'll go red. I think it's actually red, or the first one is, is, is either yellow or orange. I'm colorblind, I don't know. It might be yellow, it might be orange. But that means you're doing double, double the damage to your reel. 
okay? When that turns to red, you're doing quadruple damage, so four times the damage. So you don't want to get it into the red. If you can follow the fish, that would be much better. However, I give you one guess as to what kind of prevents that from happening sooner than later when it comes down to your reel. That's right, it's your grease. Your grease is what allows you to not go into the, the yellow or the red as soon or as often. So when your grease is low, that means you're going to, like your wear is high, but the grease, you know, the grease durability is low, I guess you could say the wear is high, then you're going to notice that you're going to go into the yellow or the red more often than you are not. That's why I do not even let this get to 10%. I usually repair it around 8%, 5 to 8%. That is me personally. It is cheap. It is, does, does not take a lot of hours to do. And you can actually save on a lot of your wear for the rest of the reel when it comes down to your grease. Because when your grease is high, you don't go into that or that yellow or um, that yellow or red on your little icon indicator okay that is just my personal opinion so with this one I can't let it go past 30 but supposedly you can go to 50% when it comes down to the spool 50% easily because of how much it's going to cost to repair it and I got to keep I got to stop putting my mouse over this because I'm gonna end up clicking it one time and it's gonna go into repair and then I'm gonna be pissed uh, the grease me personally 10% or under okay now your friction brake this is completely up to you guys there is a general consensus let your friction brakes get down to 50% levy on his suggests 30% or lower that is insane to me the fact of the matter is is raise your hand if you've had a low a low brake or a high brake where where and you've been fighting a fish and it feels like you've got this 40 pound freaking carp on your on your rod or something like that and you end up pulling it in after an hour long fight session and you realize it's like a 10 kilogram carp okay that is because your friction brake is too low i can't stand it i do not let my friction brake go below um basically 12 percent I just can't stand how long it takes me to actually fight the fish when my friction rate is low. So when I get to around 10, 12%, I start considering actually repairing it. A lot of people say 15%, but I can't do it. I have on this rod or on this reel fought a 37 kilogram taman on Tungusta. I started out at 15% friction break. I didn't realize it was 15%. It felt like a 55 kilogram taman on there um i fought it for two hours i didn't realize i was starting the fight at 15 percent friction break by the time i was done i was at 25 percent friction break it took me two hours it was ridiculous and i thought it was going to be twice as big as it was it sucked that's why i hate hate allowing my friction break to go over a 12 percent wear because i just can't stand how long it takes to get fish in it takes feels like double the time and the fish isn't even half as big as what you thought it was plus when it's repaired i can get an idea of how big the fish is actually going to be now let's talk about your mechanism okay to start off with i your mechanism has a mech weight that mech weight is hidden devs if you're watching this please for the love of god just put the mech weight in here so everybody knows we all know that you have it now please just put it in here that's all i ask okay if you don't know what your hidden mech weight is for your reel i'm going to give you two websites the first one is kilted jock the second one is a japanese website who have been testing the mech weights on a lot of these reels and stuff i will put the links in the description below you can click on those on the Kilted Jock one, you just need to go into the real, um, the real page, and on there, I think he's got it mislabeled. He calls it max max drag. In my opinion, it has nothing to do with drag. It has to do with mech weight and what your mechanism weight can handle. So he's got it kind of mislabeled as max drag but you can look up a lot of the mech weights that are on there on the japanese site they're starting to do a lot of testing and stuff like that i'll put the link in the description so it actually auto translates to english for you guys it makes it a little bit easier to figure out um, what the mech weights are they have some of the mech weights that 
um, that they've tested out and broken a couple of, of reels on and kilted jock may not have some of those those mech weights on there so when it comes down to your mech weight it is a hidden weight it is a hidden durability okay now your mech weight is not all about locking your reel that is the worst concept of mech weights in my opinion it's only one third of it your mech weight which is at 44 kilograms for the beluga narga and I, for some reason i like looking at it on here a little bit better um, we're going to talk about line capacity your mech weight on the beluga narga is 44 kilograms okay that mech weight will one give you a good idea of what kilogram weight load capacity you can use on your line i like this snake braid line a lot because the diameter is fairly low even at 28 kilograms okay you can go all the way up to 40 kilograms with your mech weight or with your line line load capacity with your beluga narga mech weight i don't suggest it because you're going to have a very high diameter and it's going to be a very low amount of um line capacity that you have on there but you can do it if you want if you want to try locking your brake locking your your brake and having your mech deal with the fish whatever but your mech weight yes you can lock your reel on and that can kind of help you understand okay what how big of a fish can i lock my reel on but it also can determine what line capacity you're using but most importantly those are only about two-thirds of what the mech weight can do the mech weight is also about how often you have to repair it this is the biggest misconception that i see people doing some of the some of the really good like youtubers and stuff that i've seen that have done videos on this don't actually know this they keep just saying well if you're going to go with a high mech weight reel then how often are you going to be locking your reel it's not about locking your reel ladies and gentlemen it's about how often you have to repair that mech weight okay and your mech weight is one of the most expensive things other than your spool that you may actually have to repair so let's figure out how to know when to repair your mech okay so here's your scenario you have got a beluga narga like i do your beluga narga is set up with a 28 kilogram line your mech weight on your beluga narga is 44 kilograms i start figuring out the wear by 10 percent because that's very easy to understand. So let's put some numbers up on the screen. Your Beluga Narga mech weight is 44 kilograms. How do you figure out 10%? Well, it's very easy. You pretend that at the back end of your 44 kilograms, you have a decimal point. To figure out 10% of 44 kilograms, you take that decimal, decimal point and you move it forward one. That's it, okay? So the decimal point is going to be 4.4. Let's round it up to 5 just to be a little bit on the safe side. We'll round it up to 5 and to make the math a little bit easier. Okay, so now 10% of 44 is, you guessed it, 5. 5 points. It's that simple. So what is 20% of 44? Well, it's going to be 10 because you take 5 and you add another 5. That's 10. What is 30% of 44? You take three fives and you add them together. Five plus five plus five is 15. So what you want to do is you want to figure this out to look at your Beluga Narga and you say, okay, my line capacity is 28 kilograms. 10% of 44 is 4.4 rounded up to five. Four, 44 kilograms minus five points is 39. Is 39 above 28 kilograms? Which is my lines kilogram weight yes it is do i need to repair my mech weight no nope. don't need to do that well let's add another 10 percent in so a 20 percent 20 percent of 44 is five points plus five points is 10 points 10 points minus 44 kilograms is 34 is 34 still above 28 kilograms yes it is so you don't need to repair your mech weight at 20 percent 
with a Beluga Narga. Let's go 30%. That's an extra 10%. So 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15 points. 44 minus 15 minus the 10 is 34 minus another 5 is uh, 34 is 29. Now you're getting close to your 28 kilogram line capacity at 29. So a Beluga Narga 30% wear is going to be around 29. Okay, so now you want to consider repairing the mech weight. Now keep in mind when it comes down to repairing your mech weight, you're, what you're going to, going to end up doing is all of these are a solid replacement cost. With your mech weight, it's repairable because your mech weight, you will repair, you will pay a base cost. Do not ask me what the base cost is. I do not know. You will, you will pay the base cost plus every time that you go a certain percentage above that, you will pay even more to repair it. Okay. So just a heads up, base cost plus how much damage you have. So if you repair it sooner, you might have a lower cost because you'll have a base cost plus whatever the percentage is. But if you wait longer, you have a longer time to catch fish. You have longer time to utilize your Beluga Narga or whatever reel you're using before you have to repair that mech weight. You guys get what I'm saying? So at 30% with the 20, I don't have to repair my Beluga Narga, my mech weight on my Beluga Narga, till about 30% on the mech weight, which is right here. As you can see, mine's at 6.3. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are probably like, oh, well, you're talking about the Beluga Narga. What about the HSV? Well, let's pull up the HSV. Your HSV reel has a 31 kilogram mech weight. If you utilize a 28 kilogram line like you did on your Beluga Narga, then when are you going to have to repair it? Should I leave you guys to figure it out your, yourselves? Nah, why not? 31, 31 kilograms take your decimal point move it over one is 3.1 we'll even round down to three per th to three points 31 minus 3 30 29 28 at 10 percent you're going to want to repair your caliber not at 30 like the narga at 10 percent because the caliber's mech weight is lower so a lot of the times when people ask me when do i repair my mech weight where do i repair my rod my reel and stuff like that it's up to you guys when you want to do that the fact of the matter is however it really depends on your mech weight of your reel and the kilogram weight line that you're using with it usually people generally will say oh repair your mech weight at 15 percent but that's not actually true it really depends on your mech weight of your reel and exactly what line load capacity you're using Okay, uh, you guys wondering about the rods? Is that what you're gonna guys were just about to ask me? Well, what about when do I repair my rods? Well, let's talk about one of your rods. I have a Super Duty right here. This Super Duty has a 2.8% wear on my blank. You cannot repair blanks. Once your blank gets low enough, you're just gonna have to toss the rod, sorry, or repurpose it for something else. Line guides can be replaced. Your line guides Okay, the general consensus that like Levy stated, he said, don't repair your line guides until about 50% wear. I don't subscribe to that whatsoever. Um, and this is why your line guides are what wears down your line. So a higher line guide weight wear or uh, damage wear means a faster line wear. So me personally, I don't let my line guides go below 15%. He says don't let your line guides don't let your line guides go below 30% and then I believe is what it is and then go ahead and repair them. I don't let mine my wear get up to 15%. I usually repair them around 10 to 15% because I'm afraid that it's really going to tear up my line very quick and I pay almost 200 silver per 300 meters of line. So I repair my line guides fairly quickly to make sure that I don't go burning through that 200 silver line that I just purchased. That's up to you. 
maybe you want to wait till 15%. I usually do around 10 to 15%. So as you can see, I'm already starting to itch at this to replace my line guides. These are not repairable. They are replaceable, meaning you will always pay 189 silver. So I can see where he's going, where he's coming from saying, okay, don't repair it until 50% because you're going to pay 189 silver every time you do. But at the same time, you're going to be burning through your lines fairly quickly because wear on line guides means wear on your on your on your line and wear on your line is 200 silver if it wears fast you're going to be spending 200 silver and these actually wear fairly slowly so it's cheaper to actually repair these around 10 to 15 percent than you know wearing out all of these lines super quick okay you don't have to worry about your handle they don't they don't wear if you like the video and you learned something consider hitting that like button no matter what you do subscribe thanks for coming to the channel and hanging out i really appreciate it keep gaming keep doing it i have a blast we'll see you guys in the next episode take care have a good one and bye bye